it's it can be sticky, right? So the 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 whole um, idea behind rate cuts is that central banks really want to see inflation moving towards their two uh, percent target, and I guess you know not only does it need to move towards the two percent target, is that um, the, 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 the central banks are probably like expecting some sort of overshoot. So, um, so let me just draw this out one second, one second annotation, right? So can you guys see my pen tool right here? The red one. You're right. Oh, you're right. Harold. Um, can you guys see my pen tool there? Where I say where it says 2% right at the bottom of the screen. Yep. All right. Excellent. So, in order for you know rate cuts to happen right so what we've seen is we've seen over the past you know couple of years you've seen inflation move above way above the two uh, percent target therefore we've had interest rate hikes right and now we're seeing a move to the downside now what central banks uh the reason why central banks are looking to cut rates even as it approaches their two percent target is because actually they're expecting some sort of overshoot for it to go, you know, down to like 1% potentially, yeah, uh, maybe even 0%. So what they're trying to do is actually try to get ahead of um, the, the the overshoot of, of inflation by trying to cut rates because there's a lag in the uh, in the data, yeah? So as prices are falling, right towards their two percent target they're looking to cut so that the cuts then push inflation you know or try to stabilize inflation and this is what like the the whole soft landing and hard landing narrative is about or the analogy i guess right whenever you see you know fed is expecting a, a soft landing or no landing it's really because um you know the, the the no landing scenario is where you know in, they they can't necessarily uh, even cut rates because inflation is maybe stubborn around that maybe three percent you know two point five percent mark right overall so they might actually even get a no landing where they don't even cut rates right a soft landing will be where they start to cut rates and then inflation kind of just about bottoms out stays around that two percent you know what I mean with some sort of um, deviation, it might go to maybe 1.8, maybe 2.2, maybe, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. But again, the landing is more within that range of maybe something like 2.5 to maybe 1.5, right? And that's where inflation stays. So as they start to cut rates and it starts to ease up, right? And they control inflation, it stays within that kind of range, yeah? A hard landing is where, you know, they start to, maybe they they they, they cut rates a bit late and then you have this overshoot where you now start to have uh, a situation where you're getting in, you know, with deflation, right? Where deflation is starting to take hold, where, you know, they're cutting rates, but they can't stop inflation from, you know, moving too much to the downside. And if they start cutting, 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 just to get inflation to come back, right? That's really what the whole hard and soft landing narrative is about sorry it's a bit small on this screen but can you guys can you guys see this can you guys do you guys understand what i'm saying is anyone lost yep yep all good everyone's all good okay brilliant <laughs> ken you're a joker but um but yeah so that's basically what is what the situation is right so you'll see so if you notice you see the swiss franc right so the swiss franc yeah recently their data and their inflation came out even lower so i think they were at 1.3 percent if i'm not mistaken and then i think it was earlier is it early it must have been last week last week their data came out and now inflation is at one percent but remember they cut rates yeah um uh, a couple of weeks ago yeah so what was supposed to happen is is that the, the cut right or the, the the cutting cycle is supposed to kind of you know um almost prevent or try to slow down the deceleration in inflation but obviously they haven't cut enough so 20 so so 0 0.25 um uh, or 25 basis points 0.25 percent wasn't enough because inflation is still coming down yeah that's what's happening 
yeah, with 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 this with this uh, Swiss franc and the Swiss, uh, Switzerland economy, right, and Swiss inflation. So you can see where you're starting to get an overshoot where central banks react maybe a bit late to inflation. Yeah. So guess what the Swiss National Bank have to do with their rates? Do they hold or do they cut? Do they hold or do they cut more? Right, exactly. They have to cut more to try to get inflation back up to their 2%. Because if you're getting into that, you know, deflation every cycle, that's when you have to start to cut rates. Well done, Harold. Thank you. All right, you've got to cut rates. Now, the US is in a different situation because inflation now is remaining quite stubborn. It's not quite coming down to their 2% target. So you can start to see now that they are likely to hold rates. They're not looking to cut rates because they're not expecting that overshoot beyond 2% at the moment. Yeah. Whereas other central banks may be like the Swiss franc and maybe even, you know, the euro and some others. Right. But it's all about the expectation. So um, what we saw here today, um, what are your thoughts if the rate on, on rates, if the stock market drops 20%? Ooh. It, if the stock market drops 20%, anyways, um, so so getting back to what we saw, what we're seeing today, right? So I hope everyone, does anyone not understand this and what's going on? And if you and, and if you don't, then I'm I'm hoping that you you've if you don't and you've done the short course and test, then I will go over it. If you haven't done the short course and test yet and you don't understand it, then I advise you to do the short course and test first and then come back to this video, then you'll understand, or you should understand basically what I'm talking about here. Yeah. So if, if there's anyone else, if there's anyone who's lost at the moment, let me know and I'll try and maybe explain it in a slightly different way or maybe try and refresh your memory when it comes to the relationship between inflation and interest rates. Anyways, um, you know, you can just put, you can turn your mic on or you can... Um, uh, put it in the uh, chat meeting. Anyway, so I'm assuming that everyone's uh, understands this. So, so what we're seeing right now is we are seeing the. If you go to the Fed Watch tool, right? Uh, let me do a quick update, uh, refresh on this. What we should see is a situation where the market is pricing out rate um rate cuts in june yeah so let's have a quick look right so no change is now up to 81 percent. if we go back to last week's webinar you'll see it was probably more 50 50 i think it was something like 47 53 or something like that in terms of an ease now that's just being totally priced out yeah so yesterday it was a 42 percent right um and now it's like 81%. Ken said, did you see the post on the group? They're just a little bit of hike priced in in July. Wow. So they're really pricing out rate hikes. Yeah. So the fact that a no change has, has, oh, sorry, I've just gone to July. Sorry. Let's, let's, let's focus on June first, right? So the, the what what you're seeing right now is the market pricing out rate cuts. Yeah. So if we go to a, a price chart and we're looking at the dollar, right? So we're seeing, this is the dollar index, by the way, the, the equally weighted dollar index, and you're seeing prices move to the upside. And this makes all the sense in the world because, um, you know, markets tend to move, first of all, in, in auctions and ranges, right? This is, for me, this is the way that I see the market. 